Okay, um, so let's actually look at how this appears in ease. So we've written this program up in, in ease and uh, we have here, right, the problem information, where's my mouse? Right, problem information here, our bail thickness, all the stuff, our really low volumetric generation rate. Um, and then I've gone through and I've computed the resistance due to uh, conduction through the plastic. Um, actually, uh, I wrote it out in terms of the LN formulation here and then ease, like I said, I use the plain wall resistance. Uh, they're very, very similar for this because of the, the radius is um, much bigger than the thickness. Right? Uh, okay, and then we have our convection resistance and we have um, our, our solution in terms of C2, right? Here's, we just copied in this um, boundary condition expression to solve, let ease solve for C2. Okay, and then we end up with our general solution here, right here. Okay, uh, we have T fire just to check how we're doing. So we can actually solve this equation now. Um, okay, and we end up deciding that the temperature T, which we evaluated in the ease equations windows at R equals zero is uh, what, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So with our two watts, our minuscule two watts per meter squared, of energy generation, um, we ended up having an internal temperature of 120. Okay, so yeah, we're probably not gonna start on fire for this situation. Uh, we're probably okay. But you know, it's a useful model now to, to maybe do some interesting analysis. Maybe the reason you're doing this is because uh, your neighbor bought a big hay baler that now can bale, you know, instead of five meters, it can bale 10, meter, or 10 feet uh, diameter or 10 feet radius. And, you're worried about that. And so now you wanna uh, test and see, okay, what is that gonna be a problem? And so you can come in here, we could say, well, how, what would actually be the, um, the radius for this uh, uh, bale to actually catch fire? So I could come in here and I could specify, okay, I'm gonna force the center temperature to be at T fire. Okay, and I'm gonna comment out my initial assumption of radius, our bale. Let's comment that out. So I could solve this again, and it would turn out that, uh, let's see, the radius uh, for starting on fire would be close to two. Okay, so as long as I keep it below this value, I'm gonna be probably okay, assuming these, these generations. But you can do, you can do, this, um, do this kind of analysis for, for whatever you're trying to do. Um, let's see, anything else to point out here? Uh, yeah, one of the things we can do is we could look at the temperature profile, or if you want to look at the temperature profile as a function of position. So let's, how would we do that? So you need to now create a parametric table uh, and then run this case for a bunch of different values of R. So I'd come down here and I'm going to comment out R equals zero. I'm going to let the parametric table deal with that. Okay, so let's go to parametric table, or enter a parametric table and let's compute TF. Here we do this, run the parametric table. I've already done that and plotted it. And here's our temperature profile as a function of radial position, right? Intuitively, this, this solution should make sense, right? You, you see at the very outer radius, there's a slope. That means we're losing heat from the outer radius, right? The TER is not equal to zero, so there's conduction happening. Uh, we're losing heat, that makes sense. Right? We're, heat has to go somewhere. At the center, we see something very close to DTDR equals zero, right? Because at the center, there's no place for heat to flow. So unless the area is really changing rapidly, the TDR is gonna be very uh, close to zero, right? Um, so our solution kind of checks out that way. Um, okay, uh, let's see. One other thing that we can do, uh, well, let's, see. let's go back. Uh, I'll pause. Any, any questions on the ease part of it or, or how you solve like what I did? This is useful for your homework, by the way, right? Running in parametric tables and commenting things out. So. All set there? Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to look at? Um, okay, one of the last things I want to do is we, we went through this process to come up with an analytical expression. Uh, there's a little bit of work involved for this problem. It's not too hard, like there's not a lot going on, um, but we put in the effort nonetheless. And I'm kind of curious, or I think it would be useful to look and see how close could we have gotten 
if we just used a resistance model with some kind of rough assumptions. Right? How, how useful is that resistance model? So let's, let's take a look at that real quick. So let's see. Um, so what does a resistance model look like here? Let me just draw this out, try to have it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so let's draw this out. So I've got my hay bale again. Uh, let's see how well I can draw. Okay, that's terrible, but maybe it'll, let's do this. Yeah, I got this uh, this note thing that actually does like automatic circles for you. So I can pretend I'm actually a good drawer. Awesome, perfect circle, okay. So here we have our hay bale. At the middle, we, we now have, let's represent this as a conduction resistance, right? Remember though, conduction resistance only works exactly if we have no generation, right? That's the formula for conduction. Conduction resistance was derived that way. But for now, let's, let's just get a rough handle on it by saying, okay, there's a conduction resistance. We're gonna figure out the lengths and, and areas involved with that to deal with, with what we're doing but we'll approximate it this way. Okay. Then we also have now a resistance, I'll draw this kind of expanded out, but we have a resistance across the plastic, so we'll call this R conduction um, bale or something, R conduction plastic, and then we have R convection, right? R convection. So we have these uh, three resistances in series, and uh, we need to figure out, um, an approximate model that, that gives us something reasonable. So let's come up with the, the equations for the resistance here. Um, you know, the, we already did conduction through the plastic and convection, so we don't need to deal with that again. Um, but we can, uh, let's look at, at the bale because that's kind of the interesting part. So our conduction bale, uh, this is gonna be approximate, right? This is not an exact representation. So let's say this is an approximate model. So how far, let's say, you know, we're generating energy within the volume. Uh, it's uniform within the volume, but, you know, some energy is being generated right at the middle, some is being generated right at the edge. So let's say, like, if heat's moving across this bale, kind of on average, how far does it have to move, right? That, that may be a, a helpful way to think about it. Well, you can argue with, <laughs> is it, you know, one third exactly? You could probably derive exactly on average how far the, the heat has to move, but again, this is um, supposed to be a tool for us to uh, approximate tool. So let's just say uh, the average is R bale over two. And so the conduction length is R bale divided by two. All right, uh, so that's our thickness to conduct. Our K for conduction is just K, you know, K of the bale. And then what's the area for conduction? Again, you can argue what's the area. Well, we could evaluate it at R bale over two. Um, we could evaluate it uh, at some other point. Let's just say this is, uh, just to keep things easy, the, the surface area of the outside. So that would be two pi R bale times L. Okay, so this is our really approximate resistance. And now what we're saying is, all right, all the heat that's generated in this system has to go through this point, where we're forcing all of our heat to go from R over two to the surface uh, or the plastic and then conduct out. But again, the goal is to just get a handle on the problem. So we do this, um, we can calculate the total, I think the total, uh, let's see, it was like something, so 14.6 watts, if you do the calculation, that's what's going through. Um, and if you conduct, uh, if you calculate the resistance, I'll just write this in a different color. So if we go back to ease and calculate the resistance, it's uh, 1.99 K per W. Um, if you look in ease, the plastic was zero, was zero point zero 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 eight K per W. That's for the plastic and for the convection, it's zero point zero one K per W. Okay, um, so first of all, you know, what, what do we uh, notice about the resistances? Think, think of what we're seeing. So we have 1.99, a bunch of zeros and an eight and a zero and a one. So what is really determining the rate of heat transfer in this problem? The bale, right? Only the bale. So really what that means is if I calculate the temperature, uh, the calculate the temperature here, right at the interface of the bale and the plastic, that's basically gonna be equal 
to t infinity. We've really pretty much pinned t infinity exactly to the temperature at the interface between the plastic and the uh, and the bale. Right, so if somebody comes out and says, hey, I've got this great new product and it's a perforated plastic, high uh, conductivity, whatever, and it's twice as expensive, but you're not gonna start on fire. You can now say, yeah, you're full of blank, right? Because the temperature at the edge of the bale is already at ambient. So what advantage is there? Right? It's a really kind of powerful way of, uh, of figuring out what you're doing. Okay, so we pinned that temperature exactly there. We basically could have said, None of this is important, right? I don't even need to include it in my model. So I could have gone back and solved that analytical boundary condition uh, as a plain old spe uh, specified temperature boundary condition and got the same answer, more or less. Make your life a little easier. Okay, so, um, uh, right, so we, we've gone through this. Now the other thing was, right, we can calculate the temperature. So uh, in ease, we went back and, and put it in ease. We could show you that real quick, I guess. So we went back here. Uh, here's our R conduction bale, put that in. We have our G dot for the uh, heat transfer and then calculated the, the maximum approximate temperature using this formulation. Uh, you can see we have the three resistances in series um, and we solve this equation or solve this set of equations. Unless I've commented everything else. So R equals zero is commented out. So E is just gonna crash. Okay, so we solve it. E is very happy and doesn't crash. And we end up with uh, what following temperature is, eh, of course, it's in Kelvin, 322K, about. Okay, you'll have to take my word for it, but the, what our approximation here gives us is almost exactly equal to the analytical solution within like a degree. Okay, so it turns out that if, you know, based on the, the rough assumptions we made, okay, if we would have chosen the total radius for the conduction instead of half radius over two, we would have got a different answer. But, you know, we kind of justified our thinking uh, and got to this point and we basically got the same answer. And, and again, the point of this is in that process, we decided, yeah, I could get rid of these two things and not even model it, right? So it, it's a useful technique to get a handle on things. I don't think I've said that about 50 times now. Um, one other thing that we can look at, the last thing we'll look at here is what happens if you know we go through this process and I have not yet decided that these are unimportant, but I wanna account for radiation as well. All right, so let's say here uh, I can branch off from this node and I have the possibility of accounting for our radiation. Or right, maybe emissivity is equal to, I don't know, what for a plastic, we can just say for one just to keep it easy. So if I go through and calculate a radiation resistance uh, for this, assuming the emissivity that I that I specified there. Um, let's see, what did I, I calculate the actual value anywhere? Ease didn't crash. Yeah, it's okay, there's a problem. So, uh, don't have time to do that. Okay, so if I calculate the value, it turns out that the radiation resistance uh, here is actually much higher. So I don't have the value on me, but it's actually much higher than our conv convection. Our convection is a smaller resistance. Okay, so what does that tell me about if radiation is important? Remember, it's in parallel. Is radiation important? It's a higher resistance than convection. No, right? All the heat's going to want to go through here. Um, let's imagine, though, that maybe I have an H bar that's really low. So now instead of 0 0.01, I have this being, you know, one or 10. So let's say this is 10. It's a big number, it's a big resistor. Uh, radiation stays the same, maybe this is still 0 0.02, right? So it's still bigger than convection would have been, but it's a small thing. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, or sorry, let me, let me think about it this way. So let's keep this, sorry, let's keep this the same, 0 0.01. Uh, let's say actually this is a much smaller number. So R.00001. Okay, so for whatever reason, our radiation resistance is actually really, really small. Does radiation resistance become important now? No. <laughs> why? So why? Because these resistors over here are still dominating, right? So under no circumstance am I ever given this problem 
going to have a re radiation resistance that's important. Okay. Uh, didn't mean to trick you there, but just to. <laughs> okay. So that's it. I, that's all I have for today. Thanks, everyone.